happy Monday, and welcome to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Today, we're talking about mental illness in sentencing. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Kevin Wagar was charged with two counts of fraud over $5,000. He was sentenced and appealed his sentence on the basis that it was unfit. The Court of Appeal allowed leave to appeal, but ultimately dismissed his appeal. The issue on Mr. Wagar's appeal was whether or not his mental illness was a relevant consideration at his sentencing. Essentially, he argued that because he suffered from a mental illness, that should be a factor that should be taken into account by the sentencing judge to determine the fitness of the sentence. The Court of Appeal disagreed and found that mental illness was not, in his case, a factor that should be taken into account in the sentencing process. This case obviously raises very important issues about mental illness in the context of criminal law. A lot of people who find themselves charged with criminal offenses are in that position because of issues with mental illness, whether they're systemic lifelong issues with mental illness or momentary problems with mental illness that have since resolved. And obviously a person's mental state is relevant to whether or not they're guilty of an offense as well as relevant to their level of moral culpability for that offense. So how is a person's mental illness not a factor that should be taken into account on sentence? And even if this was just a legitimate issue affecting only Mr. Wagar in his case, if this was just a one-off issue about mental illness, is it still not important for the court to give some guidance as to when mental illness is a mitigating factor that needs to be taken into account and when somehow it's not? Because after all, mental illness doesn't just impact you necessarily in how you're performing your actions at the time that you commit an offense, it can affect you in how you serve your sentence or how a certain type of sentence will affect you. And if sentencing is supposed to be a highly individualized exercise, how can it be that as an individual, your mental condition is never a factor or may in some circumstances not be a factor that's relevant to the determination of a fit sentence? It seems to me that this is the exact type of thing the Supreme Court of Canada needs to get involved in, the determination of a fit sentence and the role that mental illness plays in that individually for each person should have some guidelines. And it shouldn't be the case that mental illness can just never be considered as a factor on sentence or that a judge can just refuse to consider mental illness in an individual sentencing case for some inexplicable reason. To me, this was an important opportunity for the Supreme Court of Canada to recognize the role that mental illness plays in bringing people before the courts to deal with criminal offenses. And unfortunately, the Supreme Court of Canada missed the opportunity to get involved in the bigger conversation that we're having right now as a society about mental illness, how it affects people, and how it means that we should treat people and judge them or not judge them for the commission of certain offenses. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Cases that Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. I'm Kyla Lee at Acumen Law Corporation. Thank you to Brazen Bull Creative for putting together these videos. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends.